Okay guys, I'm going to show you how I um, make my boxes for shipping. Um, so, I recycle a bunch of boxes. This had little plastic fish bowls on them. And I just put fragile stickers. Just bought, I just bought them from Amazon. <clears throat> but you could do this to any box. I have other boxes over there that I'll be making. Uh, I have to ship out three or four boxes uh, tomorrow on uh, Monday morning. So just your cardboard box. This, this one's actually pretty thick. Two layers. Most of the ones I I use are just one layer. Um, this styrofoam, <clears throat> I buy mine from Lowe's. It's a big sheet. It's a four foot wide by eight foot long. I have to cut it in half so it could fit inside uh, my truck. And it's cost, uh, it went down in price actually, uh, 10 bucks for a foot, four foot by eight foot. And you could get like six boxes out of it, probably more, depending on how big the box is. Um, but these are boxes that had other stuff, some food. Um, other Amazon boxes, stuff like that. Small boxes that I bought some fish related stuff or other animal. But all you do is just get your box, get your ruler, tape measure, um, box cutter, uh, one of these, the utility knives. Something that has a nice sharp edge to it. That way it can make a clean cut uh, like this. If it's not sharp enough, it'll just break through the styrofoam and you'll get all the little balls, all the little snow out of it. And it, it, it works fine, it just makes a mess and it's sometimes hard to clean. Um, but that's all you need, your ruler, the styrofoam cutter, sharpie or a pen. Pencil doesn't really work. You can't really um, mark on this stuff since it's plastic. But all you do is basically take this bag out. You measure the inside diameter of the box. That's you have to cut underneath the actual size of the box. So that's nine. I would probably cut it at eight and a half because nothing's perfect. The box is bent, is, it has been used. So I go, it's exactly at nine. So I, I'm gonna cut one side, eight and a half. And this one, this box is pretty even. It's a nine, nine by nine. And again, eight and a half. Then you basically, Get your big piece <clears throat> of styrofoam. Get it laid on the table, on the floor, um, somewhere you don't care about getting cut. You find your measurement. Let's see. So I have these are some I already cut before. These are already at 9 for that other box. That's just an extra piece. And save these pieces. Because you can just tape them up and make a, a size you need. So, get to the top. Get your Sharpie. Uh, eight and a half. And I usually just guesstimate it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Eight and a half. Since I'm gonna be using two of those boxes that are pretty much the same. Eight and a half. So I'm gonna get two pieces out of it. One right here, one right here. Um Oh yeah, and that measurement is just for the bottom piece and the top and the lid. 
the measurement for the sides is different. The measurement for the sides, you have to measure the width, which is going to be that eight and a half. But then your uh, length measurement or the tall measurement is going to be different because you got to put the your styrofoam on the floor and then I do it a di little bit different you, you can measure like this and it'll be it shows that it's at 8 but when you put your lid on if your walls are at 8 and then your other styrofoam is uh, the same size it won't close because it's above the fold line so I usually get another piece of styrofoam those scrap pieces and I lay one on the bottom that way it's the, the floor and then the the cap um, the top piece of the box and so the measurement will change seven and a half that way let me put the stuff down that way let's say there's a floor you have your wall your wall is seven and a half somewhere down there and then you can put your lid nice and straight on top that way it makes a nice tight seal and you now have it trying to fight a wall that's above the fold line you can still do it and I've done it but it just makes it better to fold it uh, to get your size perfect and your size can fold and see I'm probably gonna use this size this piece and then just get out some more scrap pieces and tape them and then I have another lid for a box that way I don't have to waste uh, material um, I'm making another cut for uh, for the lids or for the walls so that's it basically that's the floor and you can see this this corner is not straight like this one so that's why I give a bigger margin of error eight and a half instead of I could cut it eight and three quarters but I might be too big at eight and three quarters plus when you you finish all the sides and the top when you go up to close your box you press on it and make it tight and if it's too big you might not be able to get it uh, nice and tight get it nice and closed up but I showed you guys that and you close the Sharpie. This is just a yardstick. Pretty sure it's a yard. It's three feet. Twenty-four. Um. And then, let's see. I use this rule to help me make a straight cut. Put it on top, get it somewhere close in the middle. Same thing with this one. Get your blade, I can't do this. I don't have a tripod, so I can't show you guys the actual cut. You just get your blade against this. Put it right there. Let me switch hands. Put it right there and cut against the ruler. So you can get a nice straight cut. There's other better ways of doing it. Um, but this is just how I do it. It's the fastest, easiest. And you do get a few of the little balls that, of what it's made out of. The styrofoam pieces. But it won't really matter. But let me get this cut and I'll get back with you guys. Okay. So, got it cut. So this is 
a correct length. You can double check if it it works. It'll work for either side. So I have lead for one box. I need to get one more lead. Probably save this for later. Then I have to measure again. Eight and a half. And that's about there. Eight and a half. Go down. Eight and a half. And you could measure from here another eight and a half. Or you could wait and cut it and then remeasure it, mark it, and cut it again. That way there's the floor and there's the top. Then like the other side, I'm gonna have a piece together and with those I'll have a, with the excess styrofoam I can make a wall. One of the walls. That way I save material as well and save this piece to build the walls for the boxes. Okay, let me get these cut and then continue the video. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I cut that big piece. I cut it to eight and a half. So I'm gonna be making the walls now with these two. There's Beers taking a nap. So this one i put two pieces underneath so there's the floor and then there's another one on top of it and then put some pressure on it get the measurement it's about seven and it's gonna be the same thing for this one i didn't put a second piece on underneath so it measures more but they're all pretty much the same, same thing, same box. I'll cut it at seven, or you could even cut it at six and a half, or six and three quarters. But I'm just gonna do it at seven. <coughs> you come here. So these <coughs> already cut to the width, eight and a half. You just need to measure, get that measurement from the bottom to the top to see where you're gonna cut and it's that seven inches so get your pieces get the sharpie pen and you could use the other side but it's reflective and you sometimes lose where the pen is that's why I use the white side so go on one end make sure it's flush Mark it at seven inches. Go to the other end. Mark it at seven. Same thing with both. Kind of sucks I'm using one hand, but it will still work. Measure at seven. Move them so you can cut them. Put the ruler and then just make your cuts. All right, give me a sec. Okay, got the cuts made. You can tell this blade is getting kind of dull. It makes a lot of the little styrofoam balls it breaks it off but we'll get to that in a minute take off that second floor on this one see it's right there get your walls or flip it Get your other one here, 
to get these is another measurement and I'll show you guys how to get that one as well and then let me just fold the sides over so you see how there's a little gap it's probably a half inch gap that way when you put the cover on top it fits underneath the fold line and it closes perfect the top the walls and the floor that's why i put a double floor and measure from the top of this floor this one to the top here that way it gets that nice um nice edge nice corner and it feels pretty good so that's done we could make a box quite a few different ways um let's see if this one will work so you can make this one fit you just have to push them down Okay, so it's the basic box there and then this measurement will change it's still gonna be seven seven inches tall but the width will change because you added more material so you just measure as well guesstimate it where it's at and it looks like it's uh seven and a half measure this side yeah seven and a half would be good size to cut that wall and if i'm lucky maybe this one so that's uh five and a half Plus this. Yeah, that's a little too big. Maybe this. Nope, it's still big. How about these two? Six. Yeah, that might work. But I might just hold off and get that last wall out of one of those. Because uh, I'm going to have extra material anyways. Oh, I actually have more here. So I forgot about these ones. And from these... I could help and make another piece but that's pretty much it that's what I do to get uh, the walls for the boxes that I ship out then I'll continue to this one and make the other three walls out of the new uh, the new piece I have Um, it's pretty much the video you do the same thing with the uh, other size boxes the first thing I do is get the uh, the bottoms of the boxes made like this one there was uh, the shrimp substrate in this box and this one had food basically first thing I get is um, the floors and the tops made because those are the easiest just you just measure length times width that's it and then for the sides you gotta get a little bit more tricky because you can make this these the same size and those are the same size or you can make it this one size by itself 
um, let's say this side is eight inches this side is 12 inches and let it go all the way over here but then since there's gonna be more material here you just lose a half an inch this instead of being eight it'll be seven and a half and since there's on this side there's material there's gonna be about quarter inch half inch of material It'll, instead of being 12 because there's gonna be material here just you cut this wall 11 inches of the, instead of this one being 12 because there's material on this edge and on this edge but for me I just make it the same size 8 inches 8 inches and then since there's material on both ends I make this both of these middle ones 11 that way you don't get confused about numbers maybe I even confused some of you guys with that stuff all you make all you doing is just making a box inside of another box and then with the shipping stuff um, the label printing I could make another video if you guys want me to um, it's still pretty cold in my state and in some of the other states that I've talked to you guys it's been getting pretty cold so I do put uh, heat packs 40 hours or if it's a uh, a lot of fish and it's going or it's going somewhere far I'll put up to three heat packs 120 hours that way it starts heating up pretty fast and then two 40 hour heat packs I do have some 72 hour ones I only have a couple they're somewhere else but I've been putting heat packs in all of the boxes I've been shipping out because you never know one could get delayed um, actually happened to me last week shipped three out one was one day late the other one was three days late and then the, the third one was four days late I shipped it on Monday it was supposed all of them were supposed to get there on Tuesday but they weren't the last one didn't get there till Friday Friday morning that's why I, I added the heat packs and I also have the oxygen tanks that way all the fish have oxygen when I ship them uh, but that's pretty much it guys that's how I make my boxes it just saves more money or you could buy pre-made boxes and I looked them up but they're pretty expensive depending where you get them and they're perfect size boxes and all the cuts are nice everything's nice pretty no other brands nothing um, depending on what size but a decent size probably they were a little bit bigger than this they were uh, probably two more inches bigger or 40 bucks and with this just recycle your own box free or you get a box from work spend ten dollars on the styrofoam if you need to buy cutters um, say ten bucks to get a nice multi-pack with different sizes more blades um, you can get the big rulers I like the, the wood ones because you got a bigger lip bigger area so you can put the set of the blade on there's the metal ones but those are kind of they're a lot thinner um, but yeah there's just a lot of different ways probably other uh, videos on YouTube on how to make the boxes this is just the most cost-effective way to ship your fish uh, first I was scared of shipping fish I didn't know how to but looked up a few videos asked a few other breeders that have done it before me and they just told they just showed me how told me what they did what's that piece of trash um, but yeah you just gotta try it maybe 
make your own box send it to a, a friend that's in, uh, in another state or some family or ask another breeder if they could if you could send them fish something like that that way you could try it out <clears throat> but yeah total cost me let's say you could break it down into exactly a dollar per foot two dollars per foot let's just say it cost me five bucks to make one whole box then say a couple bucks for the heat pack um, and if you have some of the little peanuts shipping peanuts any bubble wrap add that to the shipping but for me I just make a $50 that's what costs to ship because you still got to charge the actual shipping but I've been starting to ship a lot more so I just make it a full um, just 50 bucks anywhere in the United States um, yeah that's it sometimes the shipping will cost me 60 bucks but I am still charging the 50 for any size box well if it's a big big box and I'll raise it up or if it's a smaller box where only one bag fits then I'll bring the shipping down to $30 but most of those size boxes these ones I stay at that 50 because I could fit around uh, four bags standing up and in four bags I usually fit five fish per bag depending on the species and the size of the fish if they're small shell dwellers five fish per bag and I double bag them sometimes even triple bag them but if it's plecos um, you need a double triple bag them because they got spikes on them especially the bristle nose um, but yeah I'll, I'm gonna end the video that's pretty much it if you got questions uh, message me I don't really check the YouTube messages that often um, usually I'm faster through Facebook or a text message uh, you can just text me you call me or, or whatever um, make sure to follow the Facebook page I usually post all the pay all the fish I have available on there first um, I saw an aqua bit as well um, yeah I've shipped I've shipped fish pretty much everywhere California Washington I've sent to New York Florida a lot of people actually order from uh, Pennsylvania so there's a lot of fish people down there uh, Michigan Montana <coughs> But yeah, that's pretty pretty much it. It's not too complicated. This video is going to be pretty long. So, I'll see you guys next time. Leave you guys with Beerus. Taking a nap. Alright, see you guys later.